German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock was tracked down by a Russian drone. The head of the German Foreign Ministry, Annalena Baerbock, had to cancel a meeting in the Nikolaev region because of a Russian reconnaissance unmanned aerial vehicle. Build reporter Nadja Aswad, who was present during this incident, writes about this. She says that she has been accompanying Burbock on trips abroad for two years, but has never experienced such a moment. Alarm! Drones! The minister's convoy is in danger, the journalist recalls. So Burbock interrupted the conversation with the head of the desalination plant in the Mykolaiv region because of a message from the embassy staff, after which everyone immediately got into the cars. We sit down and the convoy immediately moves off as one. Having entered a normal road, the convoy accelerates to 80 to 100 kilometers an hour. And then the journalists are informed, a Russian reconnaissance drone was spotted over the territory where we were driving. Usually such drones are followed by direct airstrikes, writes Aswad. Later, alarm programs went off on the delegation's smartphones. They were informed that a Russian drone was monitoring the convoy, so they must continue to move forward. We move on, and the fear of the invisible threat from the air travels with us. A few minutes later, everything is clear. The drone has turned off. She added, Su-34 mass crash. Russia has problems with smart bombs. Russia produces about one aircraft per month. The Ukrainian military needs to destroy two or three Russian fighter jets at a time so that Moscow cannot recover losses. According to verified data, during the entire time of the full-scale war in Ukraine, the Russian armed forces lost 25 Su-34 front-line underfighter bombers. At that, the last verification of losses is dated December 22, 2023. According to unverified data, the Russian Air Force has lost more than 50 Su-34s destroyed and damaged in two years, Ukrainian military analyst Alexander Kovalenko said. At the same time, he pointed out that as of the beginning of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the Russian Air Force had 110 Su-34s in service, of which less than 100 were combat-ready. Meanwhile, Russia continues to produce Su-34s and its potential is a squadron per year, that is, 10 to 12 aircraft or one aircraft per month. In other words, if Su-34 losses are brought to the level of two to three aircraft per month, it will be impossible to compensate for their losses with their production and the total number will go into minus, the expert explained. According to him, during the fall of the Su-34, there is a high probability of the pilot's death as well and his training takes five to 10 years of constant drills and practice. It is also interesting that even if the pilot manages to eject, it is not yet a fact that he will survive after landing. The fact is that Russian pilots' pilot seats are made as for people, and when landing on the sinful earth, pilots often broke their necks, some broke their spine or limbs. All of the above suggests that with the stable firing off of Su-34s, at some point the Russian AFU may have a problem with the main working bird used for strikes with smart bombs. Kovalenko concluded, Ukrainian army shot down seven Russian fighters on the Eastern Front over the week. Ukrainian want to find chat helps Russian families find soldiers who were captured or killed. Almost two years into Russia's invasion, with Moscow's losses estimated by Kyiv at more than 400,000 soldiers, the Ukrainian authorities launched a project called Want to Find to help Russian citizens find information about their relatives who went to fight in Ukraine. According to ABC News, the launch came as a follow-up to the Want to Live project, a hotline offering the Russian soldiers a way to surrender. Since that launch in September 2022, operators of the project received more than 32,260 Russian soldiers were admitted as prisoners of war. According to the organization, some even joined the so-called Russian Volunteer Corps, which is fighting against Russian forces alongside the Ukrainian army. The number of requests soared in autumn 2022 during the announcement of a mobilization in Russia and successful Ukrainian counter-offensive in the Kharkiv region and Kherson, and in spring last year when the Ukrainian authorities were announcing the much-anticipated counter-offensive. That's when many Russians started to reach out to the Want to Live project, 
in search of their relatives who went to war and never returned, according to Vitaly Matvienko, the spokesperson of the I Want to Live project. People, mostly women, called and asked whether we knew something about their husbands or sons, whether they were captured or killed, because the Russian authorities didn't provide them with any information, Matvienko told ABC News. Since last summer, they've got more than 3,000 such requests and decided to launch a separate Telegram bot for processing them. Through it, the customers provide all the data they have, names, photos, any distinguishing features the person has, like tattoos or scars. The operators on the Ukrainian side run this data through several databases and tell them whether the person is killed, captured, or there's no information at all.